everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's Cody here doing another league logo ranking. By popular request today, we are going to be looking at the Cape Cod League, which is a league very historical that's been requested a number of times on this channel already. Here's a comment from Michael. Appreciate you, Michael. Uh, this one's for you and for everyone else who's wanted to do this league. I feel like I would have, could have, should have done this video a lot sooner for this league specifically. Kind of the only thing that's been holding me back is truth be told, I'm not in love with some of the logos in this league. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! I know it's super historic and very interesting. We're going to talk a little bit about the history going into this, but I'm ready to make some enemies today. I've already accepted that. I don't love the logos in this league. Overall, they're kind of just okay. But these teams are very historic. Many of them have borrowed names from major league teams back when there was like some major league affiliation with like branding. We'll talk a little bit about that more with each individual team. I will say most of what I know about this movie is based on the 2001 smash romantic comedy hit Summer Catch. The movie is kind of a who's who of like early 2000s romantic comedy as far as our cast of characters goes. Of course we've got Freddie Prinze and Jessica Biel. We've also got Matthew Lillard, Brittany Murphy, and of course Wilma Valderrama for some reason aka Fez from that 70s show. I'm real good with ball players. <laughs> the movie's about Freddie Prince Jr. overcoming the odds or something. He has to prove what it takes to get out of his head and make out with Jessica Biel and be the pitcher and the person that he's always meant to be. I rewatched this movie going into this video to kind of give me some inspiration. This is a really bad movie. I just dropped a bomb back there and I'm pretty sure I just poo pooed in my panties. <laughs> The only thing that's aged well out of this movie is Jessica Biel, obviously. Let yourself be great. You okay? I love her. Oh. Okay. So as mentioned, this league is like very old and very historic. It actually dates back to 1885. And it's kind of like the preeminent collegiate summer baseball league. It's by invitation only. It's known for being like the best of the best. That said, some of these logos, I mean, these teams have been around for so long, you would think that they could kind of modernize and do something a little bit more inventive and creative. There are 10 teams, we gotta start with somebody. I'm ready to just be blown up in the comments with this video, but the worst logo in this league is the Burn Braves. Also full disclosure, I've looked up how to pronounce some of these cities and names and, and whatnot, but the reality is I'm not gonna get it 100% exactly right. I'm not from Massachusetts, I'm not from the Cape or whatever. If you're gonna torch me, in the comments, do it by defense of your team and not by your hatred of me mispronouncing the city. The Burn Braves, here we go. This is, uh... So in 2008, Major League Baseball announced that they would be enforcing their trademarks and their names and their branding. So for teams that wanted to continue using those names, like the Braves here, for example, they would need to buy their uniforms and merchandise uh, through MLB licensed vendors exclusively. In this case, the Braves used to play in Boston, so they're kind of borrowing on that. I do like that they're using that and kind of like borrowing on that history, but also trying to do something unique. I am about to torch some other logos coming up here that are just doing a heavy dose of copy and paste, so props to Bourne here for doing something a little bit more original. But it's really just not that exciting at all, and in fact, this looks like a logo that I would see on a high school. The effort that this logo projects just gives me high school vibes. There's not a lot left for redemption here. Next up, we've got the Brewster Whitecaps. I never ever see this, but when I do, it really catches me off guard to include the league in your logo. I just think that's so weird, I don't know. You know, in its simplest form, this logo is just words over a baseball. Counting up all these words, we've got Brewster, Whitecaps, Cape Cod, Baseball, League, Baseball, Club. That's eight words. There's eight words in this little logo. Cape Cod Baseball League, Brewster Baseball Club, why all the words? I don't understand. This is like the most text heavy logo I've ever seen. It's stressful. It gives me a headache, man. Next up, we've got the Harwich Mariners. This one I think is kind of the most interesting because this team existed 30 years before the Seattle Mariners did. So this team kind of got like an exemption to keep using the name of a major league team even after that announcement from baseball, from major league baseball that said, hey, you can't do that. So this like looks like it's kind of borrowing heavily from the Seattle Mariners. But in fact, you might argue it's the other way around where like the Seattle Mariners might have pulled some inspiration from this logo. I was trying to find a logo history for the Harwich Mariners and I couldn't really find it. So I don't know if like this has always been the logo and the Seattle Mariners kind of pulled from it or if they had some other logo in the past, the Seattle Mariners came into existence and then this kind of borrowed from that. As it is, there's a copy and paste coming somewhere, whether that's Harwich from Seattle or Seattle from Harwich down to even like the uniforms that the Harwich Mariners wear, very suspiciously identical to the Seattle Mariners. I'm gonna, you know, keep the tin foil hat in the cupboard for now. I'm not sure who's copying who here. I do think it's cool that this team existed 
three decades before the Seattle Mariners. That's kind of cool. But again, we're just looking at the logo for the logo's sake, and this isn't all that interesting at all. The Seattle Mariners logo, we can tell that that's an S with that kind of compass and baseball going on. It's harder to tell that that's an H for Harwich. It almost looks like the Roman numerals, like two. I, I hate to be a hater. I just don't think it's a very interesting logo across the board okay at number seven we've got the yarmouth dennis red sox i would imagine the red sox are getting like a royalty of some sort for this because not only are they using their name red sox they're also using their font for all of their marketing this drives me crazy looking at this too because that Sox logo in the middle is the logo for the Chicago White Sox. So we're borrowing heavily from the White Sox and the Red Sox. It's just not a lot of originality in here. It is kind of cool that we actually do see the cape. And I like that approach a lot better than stating Cape Cod. It's kind of cool that it's showing the cape. I feel like there's a little bit more creativity that could have been done with that, but it is cool that like, okay, we know we're looking at a Cape Cod team because we can actually see Cape Cod. So that's kind of interesting. But again, this is another super text heavy logo in general. I think it's done a lot better than Brewster, but it's it's just like a little too intense with what we're looking at here. There's a lot going on. Next up, we've got the Hyannis Harbor Hawks. Right off the bat though, again, a lot of texts, including Cape Cod Baseball League up at the top. You have to squint to see it. This used to be the Hyannis Mets, but again, Back in the day, Major League Baseball is, hey, don't do that or give us money. They did keep the Mets colors with the blue and orange. Kind of cool way to like trace it back to, yeah, we used to be a different team. And orange and blue, that combination that the Mets use has aged so well. It's just a timeless look. So I really like the colors on this. And overall, it's not bad. We have like a fun cartoony character. You know, it's hard to tell if he's about to crush that ball or just whiff completely. Again, I just think it's like way too text heavy. We see the H on his hat and it says Giannis across the jersey. And we see Giannis up top, and then we, you know, with Harbor Hunt, Cape Cod Baseball League, it's just too many words. It's just too much. Like, simplify a little bit, you know? Simple is key. Simple is key. And now it's time for Silly Stories, Stories with Cody. Lanny. The part of the show where Cody Lanny comes out and tells sings a silly song. story. Native Americans bartered with the early settlers on the land on which the villages of Ketuit and Sentuit now stand. Hope I'm saying those right. The terms of the sale were a brass kettle with a hoe thrown in for good measure. Thus, the Ketuit Baseball's team name, the Kettleers, was derived from that early real estate transaction. Pretty interesting, honestly. And the logo is <laughs> interesting too. It's very simple. I, I think I might like it better if that C wasn't just on a baseball hat, if like the C was the main focus of the logo. But I really like the colors, just simple white and kind of maroon. This is kind of a stretch, but back in the day, the Norwich Sea Unicorns used to be the Connecticut Tigers. And that C on this hat looks just like the C that was on those uniforms. Very classic, timeless looking style font. And I'm into it. This is, this is actually pretty cool overall. Next up, we've got the Orleans Firebirds. It's kind of cool because what I'm showing you right now is just the bird coming out of the O, but the full logo is kind of, it's really text heavy. I'm scoot out of the way because it looks like this. And this is actually very, I really like the font here. It's very, very cool. It, it's cool. It's cool. Your whole outfit or uniform. Uniform, that's that's what it's called, right? That bird is really tough. It's very fierce. I love that it's coming out of the O. I will say like these next couple ones as we're getting into the top are actually pretty good. Next up, we've got the Wareham Gateman. This one's pretty cool too. You can tell it's borrowing from the Red Sox with that W. And I love how that W is like coming through a baseball diamond. There's a lot of like cool layering going on here because that diamond is also kind of sitting on top of that outer ring that says the team name and baseball across the bottom. Again, get rid of the word baseball. I don't like that. Colors are great. That red, blue, and, and white are kind of like classic colors for baseball. Again, this is like simple, but it's effective. It's done really well. This is nice. And now we've got the Falmouth Commodores. I just got done praising a couple teams for having like simple logos. Dude, what are you doing? Normally like a lot of detail is almost more of a distraction than anything else. But here it's very cool because this is like, again, an old league with a lot of history. And this has like an old historic looking logo to it. It's just very kind of like 20s, 30s baseball card almost. It's kind of hard to put into words. It's got this really cool crest with this anchor coming down and Commodores and a banner across the bottom. The baseball up top too, because it's kind of like the top part of the anchor, the part that goes in a chain and up on the ship deck. I don't know my nautical terms, but that's like the rounded part of the top of the anchor is a baseball. This is just a very historic looking logo. Again, a lot of detail, especially in that in that ball player there. But I think for a league like this with a lot of history, it works really well. It's super cool. And at number one, we got to go with the Chatham Anglers, formerly the Chatham A's, aka the team that Freddie Prince Jr. almost pitched a no hitter for in the Cape League. That doesn't matter because that wouldn't even make the Boston Globe. So really, who cares? A no hitter in the Cape League won't even be in the Globe tomorrow. All right, girl. That'll last you forever. I'm pretty sure I just poo-pooed in my panties. <laughs> yeah, this is very cool. It is 
100% text-based, but I'm okay with that. Historically, I haven't favored those, but this looks really cool because the how strong the font is. It's just very unique. We've got fishing wire circling the whole thing. You know, because it's an angler, it's a fisher. And it's going through that S, which is a fish hook, which is a nice fun touch at the end to kind of tie this whole thing together. Yeah. And overall, it's just very strong. Again, great colors, very simple with just blue and red. As far as like just text-based logos go, this is the way you do it. This is fantastic. And y'all, that is going to do it for another ranking. Leave your comments down below. I'm ready to get bashed on. I know how historic this league is. I know that there's so many diehards of the Cape League. Pretty decent league overall. The longer we looked at these, the more I kind of appreciated and liked them. I'm a big sucker for history, so this league is very, very interesting to me. If you guys like this, if you want more content like this, go ahead and like, comment down below what leagues you'd like to see. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. That really helps me out. Appreciate you guys ahead of time. Look forward to seeing you in the next video.